So what do you do if your garden is overgrown? Well, there's a lot of different tactics out there, but today we're gonna to show you one that works unbelievably, and it's gonna involve those guys over there. We'll come to that in a minute. Right here, we got some tomatoes, we got some basil over there. And you know what? They're still producing, I mean, for crying out loud. These guys are absolutely positively blowing up, and um, there's still a bunch more in there. Every every color you can imagine of tomato. I mean, we got purple, we got red, we got yellow, we got orange, we got all of it. Over here, we got potatoes that are still in the ground. Let's come over here a little bit more. And they're growing right up out of there is this black locust. How on earth did that happen? Heavens to Murgatroyd, what am I gonna do? And then if we go a little bit further, this is the bed where we extracted all those potatoes out there a little while ago. Michelle put in a cover crop that was um, supposed to be one thing. Well, turns out there was a whole lot of greens in there that weren't supposed to be part of that cover crop. Well, guess what? In permaculture, the problem is the solution. And we're gonna show you how we do that today. Okay, I got a couple of nets here and they're currently in the net they are right now. And they're a little bit hungry this morning. Now, I got a problem here, right? I mean, this horseradish, obviously this is here by design but we got grass, we got all this stuff growing up out of here, you know, and plus we got tons of comfrey that's growing up out of here as well. By the way, if you need any of that, we still got it at the website. We're gonna let the sheep decide what they wanna eat. My guess is they're probably not gonna fool around with any of the nightshades, but they're probably gonna lay waste to everything else. And guess what? They're gonna leave all of their wonderful fertility behind. So the first thing is, it's really this simple. And this is by design. I'm basically gonna take a net from where it is right now. I'm gonna surround this area and I'm gonna let them work on this while I start getting the net up the side of this mountain up there. You can see, by the way, I don't know if it's gonna show up well on the camera, but you can see the demarcation point where they basically eradicated or helped to eradicate a lot of that Chinese silvergrass that nothing will eat down low. And then up high, those are the areas we haven't gotten to yet. So they're going to be standing to do a number of functions over here. Number one, they're going to do all the work I don't want to do. And at the same time, I'm allowing them to do the sheepness of the sheep. Okay? So everybody wins in this. And that's exactly the way a permaculture system should be, in our opinion. Everybody should win. There should be, there doesn't necessarily have to be a zero-sum game. Everybody gets a piece. So I'm gonna pick up this net and I'm gonna commence to bouncing it around here and we'll see what happens. Okay, so all I did was basically take a temporary net, get these boxes squared away, and all I gotta do now, I'm gonna, look, I'm gonna walk past, if you're wondering what this menagerie is, this is basically where I make all the bone sauce. And um, it's, it's kind of a cool thing because when you run your animals through here, they're going to grab some of this charcoal. And if they want some of the minerals in it, they'll partake. In fact, these guys, are, pigs will eat every bit of this. These guys, not so much, but they will partake. So all I did over here is took my temporary fence, got it tied into the one going up the mountain. Believe me, they're going to have access to all this in a minute, but I want them to focus their efforts around those boxes. So, it's really this simple. I just made myself a gate. These guys know the routine. And they're gonna basically make their way. Look at that, first thing they go for, black locust. And then here in a second, they're gonna make their way all the way over there to go work on those beds. All right, so let's take a look at it. Walter, our Judas sheep over here, he knows where the good stuff's at. He's eating up all those greens. And by the way, be careful of those seed mixes. That's why we go to the farm connection because we know what we're getting. We thought this was a reliable source and here it is, we got everything but the cover crop we wanted. And by the way, on another note, if you are looking for the ball in this course on cover crops, go check out my man, Jack Spearco. He just came out with a course 
very inexpensive course to teach you everything you need to know about cover crops. Go check it out. You're going to be glad you did. Um, let's just kind of examine what they're doing. Okay, first of all, they're standing on the bed. So somebody's going to say, well, they're creating compaction. Not really that much. These are a light animal, and it's only going to be for a day. Number two, everybody hates black locusts. Why? The problem is the solution, and these guys are my solution. Look at what they're doing over here. I mean, they're going absolutely nuts. Well, we got that one in the corner going nuts on all the Forbes over there. We got another one over here eating comfrey. Look, bottom line is, if nothing else, these guys have bought me some time to now I can, while they're occupied here, I can run my next paddock up this mountain, which is gonna take a little bit of time, and I'll bring it back down. You don't need to see that, I've shown you that before. But you can see the difference, hopefully you can see it in the distance here, the demarcation point of where the sheep have been utilized and where they haven't. Where you see that tall silver grass in the back there, that's where they've not been effectively used. Down here, they have been effectively used. So now that silver grass is being supplanted with things that I really want because they're not going to eat it anyway. They basically eat all the stuff around it and then they come back and then I go through with a weed eater, knock it down, put on some extracts. That's a little bit more. But man, the, the thing you really should take away, we got this one down here eating all that clover. We got that one over there eating one of those forbs. We got these two, I mean, three, all of them. I mean, they basically wiped out for the most part. By the time this video is all done, these guys will have basically wiped out everything they can reach there. And I'm going to bet they're not even going to touch. They're, they're not even going to touch those tomatoes over there. Typically, they don't even mess with nightshades or these potatoes over here. So we're going to leave it right here. I'm going to set up this fence. We're going to come back later on today, and we're going to see how effective these guys were. Because everything they don't do, you got to do. Okay, it's literally minutes later. In fact, we just set this net up. It goes up the mountain, comes back around, and comes down. And look at what they've done already. That black locust is all but gone. They're eating the comfrey down there right now. In fact, you'll notice when you do this sort of thing, the things they eat first. It's always the comfrey. It's always the black locust. It's always the tree hay. And believe it or not, they came over here and they've actually eaten a fair piece so far. I think they're starting to get full. They've already eaten a fair piece of this... Um, Horseradish. You can imagine, this is just literally like, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes maybe. And this is what they've already done. So you can imagine what it's going to look like by the end of the day, but I got other things to do. Okay, so now the only thing left to do is to open them up into that new paddock. I'm going to leave them here maybe, I think a day. Well, actually, I'm going to leave them here two days, I think. And uh, we'll let them do their thing. How cool is that, y'all? Problem is the solution. If you got a problem out there, remember, there's almost certainly an animal like Walter here, our little Judas sheep. He ain't so little anymore. He's over here wiping out what's left of this black locust. I mean, you can use your animals to do all the work that either A, it doesn't make sense for you to do, or B, it's just plain inefficient for you to do. When you can be fattening these guys up, in fact, I mean, in the future, it wouldn't shock me if I'm ended up taking one of these guys, putting them in a pot of greens that I made out of this stuff here. It happens. All right, so now it's time for me to just go out there and let them out. There's a tree I want to protect over here. So I'm going to double my net back something. Of a, yeah, here we go. All right, look at them go. They're going to circle back and hit some of this stuff over here. But take note, here's one of the potatoes we haven't gotten out of here. I mean, there's potato, potato. We still got to get those guys out of here. And we're going to get that done soon. But you notice our wise sheep, Walter, is down here. He's still getting the easy stuff. And he'll let all the young ones go up there and go after the stuff that um, he'll get to later. They'll circle back, I guarantee it. And they're going to wipe all this stuff out. Here we are the following day. Good night. Heavens to Murgatroyd. Look at what they did. And it's a wonderful thing. So now they've gotten this black locust. Now, ordinarily, I chop and drop the black locust, you know, when it's out by the other trees or something like that in the food forest. And this one just had to pee right there. Thank you very much, little sheep. All the black locust that was over here is basically chewed up and they did exactly what I hoped they would. Everything over here is pretty much decimated. 
all of the comfrey that was over there, all of it's gone, eaten, plumbed down to the ground. The only thing left is this little end right here at the end of this bed. But as we go down a little bit more, look, I mean, there's poop, there's sheep poop all throughout here. There's obviously urine, that one just showed that. And guess what, by the close of business today, this will all be gone. I mean, everything will be nothing but stubble when they're done in here. So once again, y'all, the problem is the solution and you gotta love it. And this is, and think about how much less work I have to do because now all I have to do in a case like this where ordinarily I would chop and drop, well, I'm actually gonna pull most of that out of there, at least when it comes to a black locust. I mean, it just doesn't serve me well for it to be right here. But now all these potatoes that are still down in here, they made easy access for a lot of those guys. We'll go and get those here in a little while. And as predicted, of course, they didn't really mess around with the um, tomatoes. But folks, I mean, you can't beat it. Use your animals, like Joel Salatin always talk, talks about, like the pigness of the pig, the sheepness of the sheep. See how they can be allies for you out there to not only fatten them up a little bit more, but at the same time, do the work that maybe you don't want to do, or maybe you don't want to do all of. Because like the great Sepp Holzer says, everything they don't do, you got to do. All right, y'all, if you need any of the comfrey I've talked about in this video, or any of the bone sauce, world's best deer repellent that we make right over there. Yep, you know where to go. Go to the website, permapastorsfarm.com. We'll get you squared away. Hopefully this was a blessing to you. Until next time, this is Billy from Permapastors Farm, where permaculture is my passion. And this is part of it. We'll see you next time.